Hi, students. Welcome to the notes on heat energy. Please get out your notebook and make sure you take good notes. Don't forget, because this is a video, you can always pause the video if you need to take some time to write some notes down. And I encourage you to rewind anything you might want to go back and review. Let's get started. Here's the essential question you should write at the top of your page. How do chemical reactions obey the first law of thermodynamics? In order to talk about how they obey the first law of thermodynamics, we need to know what thermodynamics is. Thermo meaning heat, um, dynamics is the rest of it. So thermodynamics is the study of energy and heat. And that's a big part of chemistry, energy change and heat. What is energy? Energy is the capacity to do work or produce heat. Now, energy is measured in a unit called joules. And you may or may not have heard that energy before, um, but many of you probably have heard of a different form of energy, which is calories. Calories is the same as joules. In fact, there's a conversion factor between them. 4,184 joules is equal to one food calorie um, that we're familiar with when we eat food. Uh, so in, in, in science, the standard unit is joule. Now, the thing about energy, there's two types of energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. Uh, those are the main broad forms of energy transfer. In chemistry, we're going to talk specifically about chemical potential energy and chemical kinetic energy. Now, think about potential energy, potential meaning like stored energy. Chemical potential energy is energy that is stored in the bonds and shapes of atoms and molecules. So this is energy that hasn't been used. It's just kind of sitting there in, in type, in, in, sorry, inside the chemical itself. You can think about a firecracker or a firework that has not been lit off yet. There's gunpowder in there or, or firework powder um, that is hasn't been released. It's stored in there. Now, when we release that energy, let's say we light the firework, that energy changes. It goes into chemical kinetic energy. It's released energy in the form of heat, or sometimes it's released in the form of electricity, depending on the type of chemical reaction we look at. One thing I want to talk about is don't get heat and temperature mixed up. A lot of people use heat and temperature interchangeably, and they're actually two different things, and you need to know that. Heat is measured in joules, and heat is really just the sum of all the kinetic movement of the particles. Temperature is a little bit different. Temperature is a measurement of that movement, but temperature is measured in Kelvin. Now, if we were to graph temperature and heat on a graph, and we actually did this last semester in Chemistry 1 when we looked at ice, you can see in the top part, here's a big chunk of ice or the particles of ice. And over time, that ice melts and turns into a vapor or a gas. Um, now, if you look, heat is consistently added. So in this graph, heat is added consistently the entire time. But look at temperature. Temperature is not consistent. Temperature at different points plateaus and flattens out, letting us know that temperature and heat are a little bit different. So even though we add constant heat, temperature at some points might flatten out uh, because the particles or the kinetic energy is kind of at a tug of war between moving and not moving. And it won't begin to move again until we get to the different uh, phases of matter, such as solid, liquid, and gas. Speaking of heat transfer, heat always transfers from the warmer object to a colder object until they reach what we call equilibrium, or until they reach the point where they are about the average of the two temperatures. The first law of thermodynamics is what we're, what we're eventually trying to get to, and it states that the energy of the universe is constant. That's not really my favorite um, definition of the first law of thermodynamics. It doesn't really tell us the nitty gritty details that we need to know. So I'm going to give you a better definition. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but energy may be converted from one form to or, or transferred from one form to another. So that's a general law about energy, but let's speak about chemical reactions. So energy and chemical reactions can't be created or destroyed, but they can be converted. So let me give you an example of this when we talk about like a combustion reaction. Here's the beginning of a combustion reaction of methane. And so here's methane and oxygen. Now energy are stored in those bonds. They haven't gone through a reaction yet. They're just kind of sitting there kind of boring. But there's potential energy there. It's stored in those molecules. And the molecules are a little unstable. They don't, they don't want to keep that energy. They actually want to go to a more stable state. So those molecules are going to react if I light them. They're going to combust, create a giant explosion of energy and we're going to get carbon dioxide and water. Now carbon dioxide and water are more stable than methane and oxygen and all that energy they released was in the form of kinetic energy or they used up that energy. 
there's a lot of different forms of energy transfer in chemistry, uh, and you might be familiar with some of these ways. Let's take a look at this top one up here. We're used to seeing explosions in chemistry. Well, explosions are just the transfer of chemical energy to thermal energy. We take those stored energy of the particles and we release them in the form of heat. Another example we might have seen is chemical energy to electrical energy. Batteries are a great example of this. A battery by itself is just a little bit of chemistry inside a tube. When you plug that battery in, that chemistry gets used and changed into electrical energy to power something. The last one's kind of the reverse of the ones above. We're going to take a different form of energy and put it back into chemical energy. Think of the sun and plants. So electromagnetic energy radiated from the sun gets stored in plants through a process called photosynthesis and the Calvin cycle, and it gets stored in the form of chemical energy. So here we're taking kinetic energy and we're storing it back into potential energy. All right, this brings us to a different term dealing with energy, and it's called enthalpy. And enthalpy is the heat energy gained or lost by reactants or the ingredients in a chemical reaction. Enthalpy is measured in joules, but it's a little different than energy because it's a change in energy. In fact, if you look at the symbol for enthalpy, it's a delta, that's that triangle right here. That delta represents a change in something, and that's a mathematical symbol. And then H represents heat energy. And so enthalpy is a change in heat energy. There are two different changes we can have. One of them is exothermic reactions, and that is designated by a negative delta H. Here's an example of an exothermic reaction over on the left, A plus B are reactants. And when those react, they form C plus D and energy. So in this case, this reaction lost energy after its production of C and D, energy was given off. So that's why this is a negative delta H. It is losing, or the change in energy is a net negative from the reaction. You need to understand how an energy diagram works. Here's an energy diagram. It's just a graph of energy over a time of a reaction. Over on the left, you see our reactants, A and B, and they're kind of just right around here. We don't have numbers, but normally there would be numbers. But in the reactants, we're kind of at a medium-high energy. Now, if you follow the reaction over time, those reactants might gain a little bit of energy, but then they lose a ton, and the products are down here. Now, we don't really care about what happens overall. We just, I mean, we don't really care about all the, the tiny little indi indi individual details of this of this. Um, reaction. We just want to see where it starts and ends. So here's where the reactants start. It's designated by this little bullet right here. And down here is where the products end. And if you see the total energy change is a net negative, so negative delta H. So this energy, this, this reaction lost energy. Now these types of reactions give off heat. They feel warm. And I want to talk about why on the next slide. Why do things feel hot or why do exothermic reactions feel hot? Well, think about a fire, like in a fireplace or, or when you're camping. These types of things, the log, the cellulose, the chemicals in the logs themselves, when you light them on fire, they're releasing energy. I used to have a misconception where when we light logs on fire, it was just a fire basically being passed from one log to another, but actually the fire comes from the release of the energy of the logs, and that release of energy is in the form of heat. When I put my hand over it, you're just feeling that loss of energy. All right, the opposite of exothermic reactions are endothermic reactions, and they're positive delta H. So if we look at the actual reaction itself, we have our reactants, and in this case, energy is a reactant because energy goes into the reaction. And then after all the reaction happens, we get C and D, which are products. So reactions where energy is, is absorbed or gained by a reaction, that's called an endothermic reaction, and it's positive delta H. Here's the energy diagram. You might want to see if you can understand this diagram as opposed to the last one. Over here, we have our reactants, and uh, it doesn't really matter where they start. It, it really just matters where they end up. So here's our reactants A and B, and they start right about here in terms of energy. Now, over time, they might gain a ton of energy and lose a little bit of energy. You know, this might wiggle up and down a little bit, but the products in the very end is where they end up. And in this case, the products are higher than where they start in the reactant. So it's a positive delta H. This type of reaction takes heat, it feels cold. And why does it take heat? Or why do they feel cold? Well, it's taking energy from your hand. When you touch something that's endothermic, it's literally stealing the energy from your hand and leaving coldness behind. And so that's why they feel cold. All right, that's the end of our notes, guys. Good luck.